All right, starting off this next section with a word problem. All right, you want to burn, you want to burn 380 calories exercising during a 40 minute period of exercise. You can burn 80 calories per minute while biking, 20 calories per minute while swimming. All right, so here's our scenario. We need to group our numbers, All right? So I got my calories numbers, and then I got the 40 minutes. Every number is gonna be used in some capacity. So right away, one of the biggest issues people have with these problems is understanding what your X and your Y actually are. For this to be successful, we can say that X equals calories, you know, per minute biking. Calories per minute biking, while Y is calories per minute swimming. Big mistake is people sometimes say like X is just biking, Y is just swimming. Right? It's the calories per minute. And so with that idea, all right, I can say 8X plus 12Y equals 380. That's strictly my calorie equation. Right? But I gotta use that 40. To get 40 going, X plus Y equals 40. And this is strictly a time equation. So a lot of times systems systems can be set up one of two ways. One where you have the same thing over and over. Like, you know, you bought five candy bars and two bags of potato chips for 10 bucks. You bought four candy bars and three bags of potato chips for 12 bucks. That's when you have the same looking equation twice. This is a scenario when we have a different looking equation, right? One's based on calories, one's based on minutes. And we can still solve it. All right, so I'm going to go elimination. That's my go-to. Negative 8x minus 8y equals negative 320. Those are gone. 4y equals 60. Y equals 15. So we got 15 minutes swimming, which means that on the other side, we have 25 minutes biking. All right, so in the end, write your answer out. Logically, write your answer out so we can see exactly what we have. X is this, Y is this. You know, I'm not doing it at this moment, but 25 minutes biking, 6, 15 minutes swimming, that's our answer. All right, now, the real thing we're working on today, a three-variable system. Three-variable system. Not our biggest friend, all right? Looks scary at the very beginning. Once we get this down, very manageable, something we could totally do. All right, so... Let's go with, I'm gonna go with the harder one right now. All right, but the goal is this, make it into a two variable system. Now your initial thought might be, huh? But make it into a two variable system, that's our goal. All right, so first thing I'm doing, I'm reorganizing this. I want my X's, my Y's, I want them all together. So I got two X minus three Y, plus 6z equals negative 21. I got negative 5x plus 4y plus z equals 3. I got 7x minus 7y minus 4z equals negative 6. All right. I'm going to label them. equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. Right, so I'm looking, what is going to be the easiest thing to get rid of? I think the Z's might be the best way to go here. All right, you got that solo Z. I think that's going to be the way I want to go. So I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to eliminate Z twice so that I can then get an X, Y equation. So if I take equation one and two, equation one I'm not going to do anything with, but equation two, I want to multiply that by negative six. So equation one is 2X minus 3Y plus 6z equals negative 21. Our bottom equation would now be 30x minus 24y minus 6z equals 18. I eliminate. So I have 32x minus 27y equals negative 3. Right, that's not my answer, but know what? That's my fourth equation. That's important. I have an x, y equation. So I need to do this again. So I'm gonna take equation two, equation three. This time I'm gonna multiply equation two 
by 4. So I have negative 20x plus 16y plus 4z equals 12 over 7x minus 7y minus 4z equals negative 6. Eliminate. So I got negative 13x plus 9y equals 6. There is my fifth equation. And what's great about this? The fourth and the fifth equation both are xy's. So I now have an xy system set up. And I'm good to go with this. All right, so what's my easy method? Let's get rid of the, the y's. So if I take equation four and five, not doing anything with equation four, but equation five times three. 32x minus 27y equals negative three. So I'd have negative 39x plus 27y equals 18. Y's are gone. I get negative 7x equals negative 21. Oop, where my number got? Oh, I knew I made a little, little error. All right, this should be 39. And this would be negative 18. Slight error. Right? And we would get x equals 3. Right, so by working our way down, we were able to eliminate in this situation, we eliminated z twice to make an xy equation to then be able to solve for x. Right? What do we do to finish this off? Work our way back up. Right, so I'm working back here. Okay, so negative 13 times 3 plus 9y equals 6. Negative 39 plus 9y equals 6. So I got 9y equals 45. Y equals 5. All right? Working our way totally back up. That's right, so we're solving for z. So I'm going to go to equation 2. So I got negative 5 times 3 for negative 15. 5 times 4 for 20. Plus z equals 3. So I got z equals... I got 5, z equals minus negative 2. So what's our answer? 3 comma 5 comma negative 2, and it's a consistent independent one-point answer. All right, so you make it into a two variable to then solve and work your way back up. Now, if you started off by taking two equations and getting rid of x, and then you took two equations and got rid of y, it wouldn't get you there. You would have to do another setup. Eliminate the same variable right away. I got rid of z, new setup, got rid of z again, x, y equation, let's go. But being honest, this is a great method, but we have a calculator method. We have the ability for our calculator to knock out this entire problem for us. This is called a matrix. So as we've already established, right, the first thing I did was I reorganized this. 2x minus 3y plus 6z equals negative 21. Negative 5x plus 4y plus z equals 3. 7x minus 7y minus 4z equals negative 6. Now the matrix, which is rows by columns, is all the coefficients, no variables, no equal sign. So my top row would be 2, negative 3, 6, negative 21. Negative 5, 4, 1, 3 for my middle row. And 7, negative 7, negative 4, negative 6. That is my matrix. It is a 3 by 4 matrix because it has 3 rows and 4 columns. Now our calculator can do this entire thing for us. So, if I bring up my calculator for a moment. All right, so here's our situation. To get into the matrix area, we hit second x to negative one. See that word right there? Matrix. All right, some of you may have stuff here, some of you may not. Doesn't matter. 
right? So I go over to edit. I hit enter. Right, so we're working with a three by four matrix. So whatever you have up top, three by, oops, four, enter. There's my three by four matrix. And we wanna type in exactly what we wrote. Two, enter, negative three, enter, six, enter, negative 21, enter, negative five, four, one, three, seven, negative seven, negative four, negative six. All right, there's my entire matrix plugged in. There's my three equations without the variables, without the equal signs, just those coefficients. All right, we're gonna leave. Second, quit. Now we're gonna go back into the matrix area. Second, matrix. Now, by A, it should say three by four matrix. We wanna use that matrix. So we go to math. We're gonna go all the way down to RREF, RREF, reduced row echelon form. Now I gotta show the matrix I wanna do a reduced row echelon form with. So for the third time, back into the matrix area, I take my matrix, A, I plug it in. I close the parentheses, I hit enter, enter. There it is, there's our answer. I have that diagonal ones, so that's saying when there is one X, it is three. When there is one Y, it is five. When there is one Z, it's negative two because the ones are left in the column of the variable. The first column was X's, the second column was Y, the third column was Z. So it took our matrix, analyzed it, and gave us our answer of three, five, negative two. Right, so we got that answer from our matrix. Right, that process you can do every single time. You could do with two variable systems. It would be a two by three matrix. Right, but not every time does it give us the answer. So if we look here at this situation, if I wanted to do the matrix, well, first thing first, I got some dummy variables I need. Right, So I really got to make this into negative 3x plus 0y plus 6z equals negative 9. All right, no x minus 3y minus 6z equals negative 6. All right, um, negative 2x plus 0y, oh, yeah, minus 4z equals negative 6. All right, so there's my situation. So my matrix is going to look like negative 3, 0, 6, negative 9, 0, negative three, negative six, negative six, negative two, zero, oop, not positive four Z, four, negative six. Right, so there's our matrix. All right, let's put that in. So doing the same process again. So if I go into the matrix area, Second, matrix, edit. And the nice thing is you can just type in over the old matrix. So if I type in negative three, zero, oop, what I hit? Second matrix, go to. So I, up oh, my number went off, three, four. So I type in negative three, enter. Zero, six, negative nine, Zero, negative three, negative six, negative six, negative two, zero, four, negative six. All right, so I got my matrix typed in there. There it is. Top row, middle row, bottom row. Back into the matrix area. Second so quit, second matrix, math. Down to B. REF. Back into the matrix area again. Use the matrix. Enter. Oh no. What is that? So, being honest, that's not a good thing. It's not a terrible thing, but it's not the best thing. So, in our situation, the fact that our calculator just gave us what we got. 
our calculator gave us 1, 0, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0. All right, so that's not that nice, clean answer matrix. So as we talked about earlier, if you get an answer matrix, it's going to be 1, 1, 1, all the zeros there. Oop, that's an extra zero. X, Y, Z. That's our consistent independent answer. It's telling us X is this, Y is this, Z is this. We didn't get that. We got something weird. All right, so that means we got to solve this by hand. And what I could do here is if I take the first equation, right, I know the answer. So obviously this is why this is, I'm doing what I'm doing. If I divide it by 3, by negative 3, that gives me x minus 2z equals 3. If I took the second equation and divided this by 2, 2z equals x minus 3. If I did some reorganizing here, move the 3 over, move the z over, I got x minus 2z equals 3. That is the exact same equation. This is a consistent, dependent situation. I have the same line. Same line means there's an infinite amount of solutions. The calculator can't give you the one answer if there's an infinite amount of answers. Right, so anytime you use your matrix and you don't get the diagonal row of 1s, that's because there's an inconsistent or consistent dependent answer. So the rule of thumb is this. If you get all zeros across the bottom, which is junk up here, it's a consistent dependent. On the flip side, if we get three zeros and a one, right, that's an inconsistent with whatever's here. Right? Answer matrix, diagonal row of ones with the answers. Zeros across the bottom, consistent dependent, Zeros with a 1, inconsistent. Now, even if we had a two-variable system, a 3 by 2 matrix, we would have 1, 1, 0, 0, x, y. Right, so you're always going to get that diagonal row of 1s. If we had a 4 by 5, we would have even more diagonal 1s. Right, but that's what we're looking at here.